Hi guys and welcome to another video. In this video we are going to talk about the Python tools for data science and setting up the Python development environment. So until now we'll be using the term data mining when referring to problems and techniques that we are going to apply throughout these videos, tutorials. And the title of this section, in fact, mentions the term data science. The use of this term has exploded in the recent years, especially in business environments. While many academics and journalists have also criticized its use as a buzzword. Meanwhile, other academic institutions started offering courses on data science and many books and articles have been published on the subject. Rather than having a strong opinion on where we should draw the border between different discipline, disciplines, uh, we limit ourselves to observe how nowadays there is a general interest in multiple fields, including data science, data mining, data analysis, statistics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data visualization, and more. So the topics that we are discussing are interdisciplinary by their own nature and they all borrow from each other from time to time. The, these are, this is certainly an amazing time to be working in any of these fields with a lot of interest from the public and the constant bus with new advances in interesting projects. So the purpose of this video is to introduce Python as a tool for data science and to describe the part of the Python ecosystem that we're going to use. And Python is one of the most interesting languages for data analytics projects. The following are some of the reasons that make it fit for purpose. It's declarative and it has an intuitive syntax. It has a rich ecosystem for data processing and it's also used for efficiency. Python has a shallow learning curve due to its elegant syntax. Being a dynamic and interpreter language, it facilitates rapid development and interactive explorations. The ecosystem for data processing is particular, partially described in, in uh, I'm going to talk about it in the videos which will uh, introduce the main packages we'll be using in, uh, in these video tutorials. I'm going to talk about each package that we are going to use video by video. In terms of efficiency, interpreted and high level languages are not famous for being furiously fast. Tools such as NumPy achieve efficiency by hooking to low level libraries under the hood and exposing a friendly Python interface. Moreover, many projects employ the use of Cython. It's a superset of Python that en enriches the language by allowing, among other features, to define strong variable types and compile into C. Many other projects in the Python world are in the process of tackling efficiency issues with the overall goal of making pure Python implementations faster. So in these video tutorials, we won't dig into Cython or any of these promising projects, but we'll make use of NumPy, especially through other libraries that employ NumPy for data analysis. So let's talk about the Python development environment setup. So when I have, I started this uh, video tutorial, I'm not sure when you are watching this, but I'm using Python 3.5. Um, I'm using it because it has received some attention for some of its latest features such as improved support for asynchronous programming and semantic definition of type hints. In uh, terms of usage, Python 3.5 is probably not widely used yet, but it represents the current line of development of the language. So the examples in uh, these tutorials are compatible with Python 3, particularly with the Python version 3.4 plus and 3.5 plus. And in the never ending discussion about choosing between Python 2 and Python 3, one of the points to keep in mind is that support for Python 2 will be dismissed in a few years. At, 
So at the current time, the sunset date is 2020. New features are not developed in Python 2 as this branch is only for bug fixes. On the other hand, many libraries are still developed for Python 2 first, and then the support for Python 3 is added later. For this reason, from time to time, there could be a minor hiccup in terms of compatibility of some libraries, which is uh, usually resolved by the community quite quickly. In general, if there is no strong reason against this choice, the preference should, should go to Python 3, especially for the new Greenfield projects. And as mentioned, I have Python 3.5 installed on root on my system. And also, let's talk about pip and virtual in env. In order to keep the development environment clean and ease the transition from prototype to production, the su suggestion is to use virtual env to manage a virtual environment and install dependencies. Virtual env is a tool for creating and managing isolated Python environments. By using an isolated virtual environment, developers avoid polluting the global Python environment, environment with libraries that could be incompatible with each other. The tools allow us to maintain multiple projects that require different configurations and easily switch from one to the other. Moreover, the virtual environment can be installed in a local folder that is accessible to users without administra administrative privileges. So I highly encourage you to install Virtual ENV. Please go to their to the documentation site and install it. Depending on on your system, I'm using Windows 10, and I'm uh, I will I'm also using um, Anaconda uh, package to to work in the and I'm using Jupyter as as uh, the the IDE. And, but you are free to use whatever you want. If you will want to follow along my examples, then I suggest you do the same. So, so if you don't want to install Anaconda and don't want to install Python 3.5 on your root, I have done that. So you can use virtual env to create isolated uh, environments to work on. And pip uh, you should also have installed because if you don't use Anaconda, which comes with many um, packages included already, if you want to install each package uh, separately in a virtual environment, then you also need pip. You create a, a subfolder for uh, on in the virtual environment with virtual env, sorry, and then you use pip to install a package so and then you have an uh, anaconda conda and mini conda i'll talk about that uh, and this option called conda which is gaining some traction in the scientific community is as it makes the dependency management quite easy Conda is an open source package manager and environment manager for installing multiple versions of software packages and related dependencies, which makes it easiest, easy to switch from one version to the other. It supports Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And while it was initially created for Python, it can be used as a package and uh, used to package and distribute any software. And there are mainly two distributions that ship with Conda, the batteries included version Anaconda, which comes with approximately 100 packages for scientific computing already installed, and the lightweight version Mini Conda, which simply comes with Python and the Conda installer without external libraries. So I highly recommend you to go to continuum.io and uh, download Anaconda because that's what I'm using. So if you're new to Python, have some time for the bigger download and disk space to spare and don't want to install all the packages manual manually, you can get started with Anaconda. For Windows and Mac OS, Anaconda is available with either a graphical or command line installer. 
So check out which version you want to use. So in all cases, it's possible to choose between Python 2 and Python 3. If you prefer to have full control of your system, Miniconda will probably be your favorite option. So So either you can download Anaconda with everything included as I've done, or you can use Conda or you can install uh, each required packet with pip install. So that's it for the initial installation. And we'll talk about each package uh, in the next consecutive videos. So see you soon in the next video.